I remember uh, thinking of compassion and, and, and trying to figure out, you know, as I was thinking of examples, and there's this church, a young pastor, and they raise his debt. Anyway, but no, that's a, uh, But I remember I, my sister lived in Honduras for two years, and she lived down there uh, working in the school and just helping out. I remember uh, the first day that I, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to go down a couple times and visit her and help out. And, uh, and uh, the first day I was there, I remember she took me, and for some reason she felt like she had to show me the entire country in two hours. No, but, but, but I remember at that, that first night, though, uh, she, she did take me to a nice restaurant, and we ate with some of her friends, and we, we were sitting around and eating. And then at the end, I, I just ate all my food because I had airplane food that... You know, so it wasn't that good and that filling. So I ate all my food, but I noticed that everyone else uh, didn't finish their meal, and so they they boxed it all up or whatever they did, and and uh, and as they walked out, all of a sudden there was a handful of, of homeless people, and they just handed that to all of them. All that they gave up all of their leftovers, and and I know we've heard stories of that. Uh, you know, we've heard stories about that. Maybe some of you have even done that before. But that was the first time I remember seeing that and seeing, oh, they sacrificed half their meal uh, so that others would actually have a, a meal that day, you know. And then that was a, that stood out to me. Uh, that stood out to me a lot. Also, uh, as we look at these pictures, these are high school kids. And in the fall, I think you guys remember we took a group down to Indianapolis. Uh, our youth group took a youth group down there, and we handed out socks and hand warmers to to those who. Who live on? Who were just living on the street, trying to figure things out, trying to get things figured out. And I was as scared as them because I didn't know it was just an idea, and I didn't know that it was actually going to fall through. But anyway, we did, and here we are in Indianapolis, and uh, and we're about to do this. And I remember ha- with the hesitation the first time, going up with a couple kids and and handing out socks and asking if we could pray with them, and and, and, and everything was good. And and so I, I sort of just had this fear the entire time, just a little, you know, because I wanted the safety of the kids and be responsible on that. Then all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, as we're finishing up, I just start seeing these kids just go. Just go. Not with, not with Steve or me. Just They were just going. And they were going up to men and, and women and asking, not just, here are socks, but seeing that these people's heads were dropping and they were praying together. You know, compassion doesn't just end with giving a meal or just end with giving with clothes or, or, or prayer, but, but it's the spiritual needs that people need. It's that extending of compassion saying, this is who Jesus is. Can I pray with you? Can I let you know who He is? And so that's a, it, was, it blew me out of the water to see these kids do that and be brave in that, in that setting. Uh, there's a story, uh, and maybe you've heard a similar story before, but a man, he's traveling and he's in a traffic jam. And he's, he's, he's just furious because he needs to be somewhere. So just envision now being out on 6th Street uh, uh, right now. Uh, I had a side note right now. Uh, I was in a hurry to go some, get somewhere, and, uh, and I was driving. And I don't know if any of you have ever had this experience. You know, the, the guy who stands there with the stop and the slow sign? You know, and you're driving up there, and you're like, slow, slow, I'm driving slow, slow. And then the truck goes in front of you, or a car goes in front of you, and then you just see the walkie-talkie to the ear and the turn of the wrist. And you're like, no! <laughs> anyway... But we've been in those instances where we're in a hurry and we need to get somewhere. We need to get there fast. And in this story, this man is it's going slow and he is yelling. He is furious. He's just mad. He's honking his horn. He's just screaming probably not nice things. And he's just, he's just mad. He needs to be somewhere and be there fast. And uh, what he doesn't know is that there's a police officer behind him. And so as the traffic is stopped, the police officer gets out and goes to the front uh, or goes to the window and says, and this man is just astounded. Like, what are you doing here? Why are you Why are you out of your car trying to, you know, arrest me or whatever you're trying to do? And the police officer says, Well, uh, I'm just assuming that you've stolen this vehicle because you have a WWJD bumper sticker, and surely you wouldn't you wouldn't be acting this way. Or what would Jesus do? Bumper sticker. But that that the point is is that how we live matters. Are we living in a way, even with chaos 
going on around us we may feel like. We may feel like the last two years have just been spinning. Or maybe we've just felt like that our entire life. But even in those moments, even in those moments, we are to be so in love with Christ that we are dripping with compassion. Even when we wake up on the wrong side of the bed and we don't want to talk with anybody for another 32 hours, we need to be dripping with compassion. Are we brave enough to live that way? Are we brave enough to let others know that we follow Jesus Christ? William Booth was the founder of the Salvation Army. And this is an interesting story. It's sort of a good story because it's a conversation he has with his son. So perfect for Father Father's Day. And I'll just read this. It's an excerpt from the book. William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, was passionate about showing compassion. That's pretty good. Especially for the downtrodden of the sl- uh, London slums. One day, his son Bramwell... Do we have any Bramwells here? Okay, no, I'm joking. Never mind. Okay. I hope that didn't offend anybody. Okay, but one day his son Bramwell entered the room early and found his father furiously brushing his hair, brushing and brushes in both hands. That's what happened to me. Was... <laughs> but as he was f- frantically finishing dressing for the day, he said, "No, no time for good morning." Booth looked at his son and cried, "Bramwell, did you know there are men sleeping outdoors all night under the bridge?" He'd been in London late the preceding night and this had been a shocking sight on his way home. Well, yes, said Bramwell, his son. A lot of poor fellows, I suppose. Then you ought to be ashamed of yourself for having known it and done nothing for them, answered William Booth. Bramwell began constructing elaborate excuses. Uh, He could never help in any kind of way. He, He was busy. His plate was full. And this may be something that we have heard from our fathers or maybe we've heard from someone. But then William Booth said to his son, he barked at his son, and he said, go and do something. Go and do something. Today, are we willing to take this message of compassion that Jesus taught us Are we willing to live differently? Are we willing to live with an open hand instead of a clenched hand? Are we willing to go and do something for the name of Jesus Christ? Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for showing us compassion. Lord, be with us now so that we can go and share compassion with others. In Your name we pray. Amen.